I disagree with that representation. You also saw this picture. Actually, can we please bring that defendant's exhibit 1821, which is also admitted into evidence? You also saw this picture during your direct examination, correct? That is correct. And so this is the bar area to the right of the wall-mounted phone you just described. If you were facing in that direction, if you're facing this direction, it would be behind you. This phone on the counter isn't the phone that got smashed to smithereens, is it? No, they brought that out um, during my testimony in the UK as well, and I said this in the UK trial as well, that that is not the phone. Obviously, because that one's not smashed and it's not wall-mounted. Yeah, so there are two phones in the bar area. There, there was a wall-mounted phone. I don't know if it was decorative or what, but it was what, like it looked antique, large and antique. And and what the large and antique one that's not depicted in any photograph, including ones you took, is the one that Mr. Depp damaged, correct? That is correct. I only took pictures of the mirrors. So there's no picture of that damaged phone? I didn't take a picture of it, no. So back to the phone smashing. You watched Mr. Depp smash the phone, right? That's correct. I watched it. And you testified that you were, quote, watching the phone every single time he pulled his hand back, end quote. That's correct. And according to you, this is when Mr. Depp lost the tip of his finger, right? It is my best guess. I didn't notice his finger come off, obviously. I was um, watching him smash the phone and watching the pieces break while he was doing it. Well, it's not your best guess, Ms. Heard. That is my best guess, yes. Okay. Let's go back to my questions. You submitted a declaration under the penalty of perjury in this case. Do you remember that? That is correct. Okay. Let's look at that declaration. Yes, ma'am. your attention, Ms. Heard, to the page uh, 14 of the declaration. Is that your signature? Yes, it is. And your signature appears right under the statement, quote, I declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the state of Virginia, that the foregoing is true and correct. That is correct. And this is dated April 10th, 2019. Correct. Now let's look at paragraph 16, which is on page five. Specifically line 10. Quote, you write, testify under oath, while he was smashing the phone, Johnny severely injured his finger, cutting off the top of it, end quote. Did I read that correctly? Yes, that's correct. So you testified in this courtroom that after Mr. Depp smashed the phone, he held you down on the countertop by the neck. Do you remember that? I'm not quite sure of the exact sequence of things, but yes, both of those things happened. Well, we'll get to the sequence. And this is when Mr. Depp supposedly assaulted you with a bottle, right? On the countertop, he assaulted me. So Mr. Depp was able to get you on the counter, right? He held me down by my neck. And hold you down by your neck. That is correct. And he grabbed a bottle, according to you, by holding you down by the neck, correct? I'm sorry, can you clarify what you're asking me? While Mr. Depp is holding you by the neck against the countertop, he grabs a bottle. That's your testimony. No, those two things didn't happen at the exact same time, no. While he, so he's holding the bottle, is that your testimony? He While holding, holding my, you down by the neck? Sorry, what was your question? Your testimony is, Ms. Heard, that either he has the bottle before or after he's holding you by the neck on the counter. Is that your testimony? He held me by the neck on the counter. Where's the bottle? That he assaulted At what point? With? While holding you down by your neck. When he was assaulting me with the bottle, it was in his hand. Was it in his hand before or after he holds you down by your neck? 
I was being held down while he assaulted me with the bottle. When he puts you on the counter, does he have the bottle in his hand, yes or no? As I have always said, I don't remember exactly what happened first, or I don't remember the sequence. I just remember being aware that I was being assaulted by a bottle while I was on the countertop. So he penetrates you with this bottle. But you don't know how he got the bottle, right? That is correct. And he did that right after he lost the tip of his right middle finger. Again, I don't remember the exact sequence of those events. We'll get to the sequence. And while he was on eight to 10 MDMA peel, pills, right? Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about the sequence. This is the sequence of events you testified to in this courtroom. That he smashed the phone to smithereens and then assaulted you, lost the tip of his finger, and then assaulted you with a bottle. Yes, that's the sequence of events that you testified to in this to be, courtroom. To be clear, you're putting it in order when you say words like, then I have never claimed that I can remember the exact sequence of these things. This was a, a multi-day assault that took place over Three horrible days. Ms. Heard, the worst thing ever Ms. Heard, happened to me. I we're don't not Ms. Heard, that's not my question. My question isn't about the three day assault allegedly that occurred. I'm just talking about the sexual assault that you now allege occurred. Yes, okay? correct. Let's talk about the sequence. <laughs> so you testified. Actually, do you have a copy? Yeah, I know. I just realized that. Do we have a copy? We gave it to you yesterday. Court transcript. Yes. Ms. Heard, do you have a copy of day 16 in front of you? Uh, day 16? Yes, yes, of court my deposition. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, of the court transcript from this trial. Oh, yes. I, I didn't realize that. This, yeah. Okay. Let's look at the transcript. So you testified on page, I'm getting there, 4506. reason that we need to go through this, Ms. Hurd, is because we understand that these are very serious allegations that you're making, right? It was horrible. What happened to me, yes. Okay, so let's go through them. Page 4506, line 2 through 3. I sit here now. Apologize. You testified on page 4506. This all started when Mr. Depp took 8 or 10 pills of MDMA, right? That is correct. Then, directing your attention to page 4518, line 19. You talk about Mr. Depp smashing a wall-mounted phone, correct? That is correct. Then on page 4519, at line three, you testified that while Mr. Depp is smashing the phone, he is screaming, quote, I fucking hate you, end quote, right? Yes, he, he was screaming that among other things. And further down on page 4519, same page, lines 12 through 19, you talk about how you watched Mr. Depp smash the phone to smithereens, right? That is correct. Okay. Then, Continuing on on the same page, 4519, line 20, you say something really important. Quote, at some point, he's on top of me. No phone, but screaming the same thing, end quote. Right? I just remember the sound, yes. But you remember, and you testified to the jury, that he didn't have the phone in his hand anymore. When he was assaulting me with the bottle, right. he had the bottle in his hand when he was 
punching the wall with the phone. He had the phone in his hand. When he was punching the wall next to my head, he had me by the throat. He did a lot of things that night. So you're acknowledging by this sequence, not my words, your words, Ms. Heard, that you testified to this jury that Mr. Depp smashed the phone to smithereens before he assaulted you. That's have, the way, that's the sequencing in which you testified, correct? I have never testified to a sequence. talking about that sequence. Then on page 4521, starting at line three, you testified to being bent over backwards on the bar, right? Okay. Directing your attention, Ms. Heard, to page 4521, starting at line 3. You testified to being bent over backwards on the bar, right? That is correct. And then feeling pressure on your pubic bone like Mr. Depp was punching you. Yes? That's what I thought. And then further down on page 4521 and on to 4522, you testified that you were concerned Mr. Depp was using a broken bottle on you. Yes? That was my fear. Okay. That's what I remember feeling. Ms. Heard, I'm going to show you Defendant's Exhibit 1816. Just already been admitted. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You saw this picture during your direct <clears throat> examination, right? I did. And you testified that this is a picture of the bottles that were next to Mr. Depp on a desk when you found him drinking in the morning, right? That's correct. And this was the morning after Mr. Depp had allegedly sexually assaulted you, right? It was the morning after he did assault me, yes. And if I understood your testimony correctly, you testified that this is the maker's mark bottle that Mr. Depp sexually assaulted you with. I was never sure it was, but it was definitely that shape, felt like that shape. But you testified in this courtroom that you had not seen this bottle until Ben King provided these photographs, correct? Not in the course of the trial, I hadn't seen the photograph. You claim you had serious injuries after this alleged incident, right, Ms. Heard? Depends on what you would call serious. For me, um, you know, having a sore jaw and some bruises uh, at the time of my relationship wasn't that serious. Um, okay. Let's testify. Relative. Let's focus on the testimony that you gave about the injuries. Mr. Depp, as you testified yesterday, wears rings on every finger, right? Sometimes. I mean, often. And certainly in the later part of our relationship, that was more normal than not. But if he's filming or something like that, of course, he's not going to have his own jewelry on. Your testimony in this trial was, quote, I don't know if I've ever known Johnny not to wear rings. Correct? You need to put your microphone on, Miss. Thank you. Objection, Your Honor. Really? Improper impeachment there. She's going to ask her question that she has to show where that was. And then I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. Thank you. Your testimony yesterday was, quote, I don't know if I've ever known Johnny not to wear rings. Right, that's, Ms. Heard? That's what I testified to, yes. Okay. And he was wearing rings on every finger in Australia, correct? Not all the time, not literally every single ring every single day, but he often wears rings. Not often, Ms. Heard. 
Your words are, I've never known Johnny not to wear rings on every finger. That is what I testified to. Okay. And you testified that you bled as a result of this sexual assault, correct? That is correct. Okay. And you testified that your forearms were cut. My forearms and my feet. And your feet were sliced up. That's correct. And you testified you had a bruise across your jaw. That is correct. And there is not a single medical record reflecting treatment for any of those injuries. Is there, Ms. Hurd? I didn't seek treatment. And the day after you sustained all these injuries, Dr. David Kipper came to the house in Australia, right? Well, he came the third day uh, along with security. The day after you sustained these injuries, Ms. Dr. David Kipper came along with Nurse Debbie Lloyd, correct? Well, the that fight went into the morning, like early hour morning, so technically that last day. Dr. David Kipper is Mr. Depp's, or was Mr. Depp's uh, physician, right? I believe he still is. But yes. he was at the time. Yes, that's correct. And he was also your physician. He also saw me. No, not saw you. He was your physician, correct, Ms. Hurd? Uh, Johnny was the client, but he also treated me. All right, let's please pull up. Do you remember giving testimony in this case in a deposition, Ms. Hurd? Yes, I do. I've given a couple. If we could please uh, pull up the deposition transcript, uh, day two, um, at 589, lines six through eight. May I approach? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Your Honor, we're going to play Ms. Hurd's deposition for the jury. Uh, lines, day two, page 540, lines six through nine. If we have permission to publish it. I know, you gotta give me Excuse me, I, I'm sorry, day two, Page 589, line six through eight. All right, could you just give us a minute to get of there? Of course. 589. I'm sorry, what were the lines again? Page 589, line six through eight. Wait, wait, wait. Did you say 540 or 589? 589, uh -huh. lines six right. through eight. All right, thank okay. you. That's thank fine. you. I have no objection, Your Honor. And he was your doctor at this point, right? Yes, he was. Debbie Lloyd also came to the house that day. Yes, she came with Kipper. Yeah. Miss Lloyd is a nurse, correct? That is correct. Malcolm Connolly also came to the house that day. Yes, that's correct. Mr. Connolly is one of the security guards, correct? That is correct. You had known Mr. Connolly for years at that point. Yes, that's correct. You flew back to Los Angeles the next day with Ben King. Is that right? I can't be certain if it was uh, the next day or the day after, but somewhere around there, yes. And the day you arrived back in Los Angeles, you saw Travis McGivern, correct? I don't recall seeing Travis, no. You don't recall Mr. McGivern picking you up from the airport with Ben King? I don't remember that, no. Okay. And the same day, you also saw your own nurse, Erin Barem Filotti, that day, correct? The day you arrived in Los Angeles? I don't recall if I saw her that day. You saw Ms. Vladi's testimony in this case by a video deposition, correct? That is correct. And you heard her testify that she saw you the day you arrived back from Australia on March 9th, 2015. I believe she testified that she came to dinner where I was with friends. Yeah, I believe that. So she saw you that day? I believe that evening I saw her at dinner. Okay. And then you saw Aaron Baran Vladi again the next day for a private meeting, didn't you? I, I'm not sure if that if that's what she testified to. I'd have to just see the records to know. You heard her testify according to her notes. She met with you privately on March 10th, 2015. She met with me at some point upon my arrival, but I don't remember the exact date. And when you were in Australia, Ms. Heard, you didn't take any pictures of the injuries you claimed to have sustained, right? I did not take any pictures, no. But you did take two pictures. Of the mirrors. I took two pictures of the bathroom mirrors that... Um, was the master bathroom where I was. Let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 374, which is already in evidence.
You took this picture, right, Miss Heard? Yes, that's correct. And this is a mirror in the bathroom in Australia? That's correct. And this black paint on the mirror is from Mr. Depp? That is correct. He wrote on the mirror in black paint after his finger was cut off, right? Uh, yes, uh, I only know that because there was blood and as well as paint. So you took this picture after Mr. Depp had injured his fingers, correct? This was while I was packing, when I was leaving. Th that's, that's a yes, right? The photo. Heard? That's what's the question? I'm sorry. You took this picture after Mr. Depp had injured his finger. That's correct. And you took this picture after you had allegedly been assaulted by Mr. Depp. Yes. That's correct. Yeah, you didn't capture yourself in the mirror, did you? I don't see myself in the mirror, no. Let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 375. You took this picture as well, right, Ms. Heard? That's correct. And this is from one of the bathroom mirrors in Australia? That's correct. This is also a picture taken after Mr. Depp had injured his finger? That's correct. And this is also a picture taken after you had allegedly been assaulted by Mr. Depp? That's correct. You didn't capture yourself in the mirror in this picture either, did you? I do not see myself in the mirror in that picture. Is that because you didn't have any visible injuries on you? It's because I was taking a picture of the writing. Let's talk about the writing on this mirror. So the writing in black paint is from Mr. Depp, correct? It's all from Mr. Depp. And it's your testimony under oath that you did not write the red text that says, quote, call Carly Simon, she said it better, babe, end that's, quote. That's correct. Because if you did write that, it means that your husband was walking around the house bleeding from his amputated finger and you're writing snarky messages to him on a mirror, right? I don't know what your question to me is, I'm sorry. Let's please take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1830. And I believe this, pic this picture is also admitted into evidence. That's correct. This is a picture of the same mirror, right? That's correct. But you didn't take this picture? No, I did not. This is the one that Ben King took. And I don't see him in the mirror either. He's, I don't believe he claimed he had injuries though. Is that right? I did not hear uh, Ben King talk about his injuries, no. So you would agree, Ms. Heard, that the black text on the mirror says, quote, she loves naked photos of herself. So modern, so hot. I had not read that yet. I mean, before, but yeah, that's what it says. But you were taking pictures of the text, but you had not read that before? I haven't seen this. It didn't make sense to me at the time when I read it in person. Okay. Again, Mr. Depp wrote that. Uh, I don't know who else would have. So Ms. Heard, just to be clear, it's your testimony that Mr. Depp also wrote the message in red about Carly Simon saying it better, right? That's correct. You know Carly Simon saying the song, You're So Vain, right? I was told that. So it's your testimony that Mr. Depp was writing messages to himself in the mirror back and forth. The best I can describe it is it looked like a crazy conversation. It was on the walls, it was with on himself. Lamp shades, it was on cushions. It's your testimony the crazy conversation was with himself. That's what it looked like okay. from the bloody messages I found. And you would agree with me that in this photograph, the red text has been smudged with black paint, right? Yes. Okay. Let's please pull up, if we can, Defendant's Exhibit 35, excuse me, 375 again. The black smudge isn't in this picture that you took, right? That's correct. So Mr. Depp must have not liked his own message to himself. I'm not quite sure what was happening when Ben took that, the, his photograph, no. Okay. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 343, which is already in evidence, and play the portion from 157.21 through 158.54. It's a recording, Your Honor. It's, it's, it's not to get you mad, it's not to get, it's just to get out of a bad situation while it's happening before it gets worse. In Australia, when we had the big fight where I lost the tip of my finger, at least five bathrooms and two bedrooms I went to. To, to, to avoid talking to me. To, to avoid escape, the, to escape the fight. 
You don't escape the fight. You escape the solution. No. You escape the solution. No. You s escape figuring it out. We cannot work it out if you run away to the bathroom every time. Listen to me. Listen to me. A boxer can't go 12 rounds without a fucking minute break. I'm not not giving you a minute break. You do it at minute three at the beginning of an argument. No. There are rounds, man. And when it gets too fucking hairy, the ref splits them apart or whatever. But I'm, I'm, I, all I'm saying is you, 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 you can't have a solution if the argument just keeps mounting and mounting and mounting and mounting. I fucking go to the, into the bathroom and sit on the floor. Bam, 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 here you come. I come out. Fight, 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 crazy, escalated. I go, I split again, I go to another fucking bathroom or a bedroom or something. Knock, 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 bang, bang, bang. You kept coming to get me. Every this is what really happened in Australia, isn't it, Miss Heard? Uh, I did knock on a bathroom door on the first night. Not a bathroom door, five bathroom doors and two bedrooms. Uh, is Johnny right? is not an accurate historian of what happened during Ms. Heard, that uh, Ms. Heard, period of time. I'll guarantee Ms. you. Ms. Heard, that. that's not my question. Five bathroom doors, two bedrooms. That's what you knocked on. I that's what there. actually happened in Australia, isn't it, Ms. Heard? I was there. So that's I no? remember it. I knocked on one bathroom door. I came on the first night after he decided to take the bag of MDMA. Ms. Heard, to check Ms. Heard, on I'm going to move to strike everything after I knocked on one bathroom she door. She can't do that. She's answering the question. But, uh, not quite, so I will sustain the objection. Okay. Just answer the question, okay, ma'am? The recording we just listened to, that's exactly what happened in Australia. Mr. Depp lost the tip of his finger after you threw a bottle at him. Isn't that right? That is incorrect. Okay. You're the one who assaulted someone with a bottle in Australia. Isn't that right, Ms. Heard? I didn't assault Johnny in Australia. I didn't assault Johnny ever. I couldn't. And then after he was injured, he had to hide from you, right? That is incorrect. Five bathrooms, two bedrooms. That is incorrect. And you would pursue him. That is incorrect. Because he was avoiding talking to you, right? He did that first night when and he was I avoiding, tried to talk to him about the drugs. And he was avoiding working it out. No, he was uh, avoiding agreeing to not fight about the drugs. You weren't scared of him at all, were you? I have a, uh, a mixed relationship with Johnny and one in which I'm scared, one in which I love him very much. I'm not talking about your mixed relationship. That night in Australia, after you cut off his finger with a bottle, you weren't scared of him at all, were you? This is a man who tried to kill me. Of course it's scary. He's also my husband. Ms. Heard, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 371. I do not believe these have been admitted into evidence. No, I don't. Okay. I don't have them. If we can scroll down, please. Is this one on the No. Ms. Bretterhoff, if you don't have your microphone on, I cannot hear you. You still don't have it on. I need to take a look at the unredacted. Oh. I need to take a look at the unredacted for a minute, Your Honor. Just bear with me. I'm not admitting it into evidence yet. I would like to just okay, talk yes, to the witness sir. about it Go if ahead. I could. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Hurd, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 371. Do you recognize these text messages between you and uh, Dr. Cowan? I don't recognize these, no. Who's Dr. Cowan? He was um, my therapist that uh, was recommended to me from Dr. Kipper. Uh, he and Dr. Kipper worked together. He was your therapist at the time, correct? That's correct. And you had been seeing him for almost a year in March of 2015? Uh... My guess would be about six months at that point. Your text messages are in gray, correct? 
Your Honor, I'm going, I'm going to ask that she show her the unredacted so that she can see the text exchange back and right. forth. If she wants to talk Absolutely. about right, moving we'll pull that up. redacted sure. later. That's good. Thank you. We'll pull it up. Seeing these unredacted messages, does this refresh your recollection that these are indeed communications between you and Dr. Cowan? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Doctor, your text messages are in gray, correct? Yes, that's correct. And Dr. Cowan's are in blue? That is correct. Okay. Do you see the text message at the bottom of the page from March 8th? 2015 at 8:29 p.m. Yes, that's correct. March 8th is the day that you were allegedly sexually assaulted by Mr. Depp in Australia, correct? That is correct. Right. So on March 8th, 2015, you were in Australia. That is correct. And Mr. Depp's finger had just been cut off, right? That is correct. And you write to Dr. Cowan, quote, "I feel so lost. I can't talk." I don't know if I'll ever be able to change, end quote. Did I read that correctly? That's correct. You weren't able to change, were you, Ms. Heard? I very much wanted to leave the relationship I was in, but I didn't have the power. I didn't feel I had the power to leave. I knew I was in a very toxic relationship with Johnny, and I knew I needed to change that. I knew it was, at this point, horrible for me. And I'm I talk to my to therapist often about that. Exhibit, defendant's exhibit 371 as redacted with just Ms. Hurd's messages. All right. Your Honor, I object because she has left out the next two lines from Ms. Hurd that clarify even further. And I also think Ms. that Dr. Cowan's... Uh, could you Your Honor, may we please yeah, approach? I, this is... So, Your Honor, I'm going to move to admit Defendant's Exhibit 371 as redacted. All right, 371 in evidence as redacted over objection. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. If you can publish that to the jury, thank you. So you write, Ms. Heard, to Dr. Cowan, I feel so lost, I can't talk, I don't know if I'll ever be able to change. Right? And I said, I clearly can't figure this out, meaning the relationship. You didn't say that. You said, I did. Not the relationship. Your text messages, clearly I can't figure this out. I feel so lost right now. What I was saying to him no, no, no. is Ms. clearly Heard, I can't Ms. Heard, figure this Ms. Heard, out. Ms. Heard, that's not my question. The text. Just the text. That's exactly what, you what I was saying. What you texted. 
clearly, I can't figure this out. I feel so lost right now. That's, That's what right. I was saying. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Hardy, you contend? Your Honor, just for clarification, so those two next lines did come in. They are in the redacted Okay, copy. good. All right, thank you. Ms. Hardy, you contend that there's another incident of abuse in March of 2015 after you and Mr. Depp returned from Australia. Is that correct? That's correct. And this is, incident took place on March 23rd, 2015? That's correct. And this supposedly occurred in the penthouse at the Eastern Columbia building? That's correct. You had found text messages between Mr. Depp and another woman, right? That is correct. So you confronted him about cheating on you? That's correct. And this was about two weeks after you had returned from Australia? That's correct. So this is shortly after Mr. Depp supposedly sexually assaulted you with a bottle, right? It was two weeks after he assaulted me, yes. And you decided to confront him about cheating on you? Um, I, I didn't decide to. I, 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 I wanted to. Mr. Depp's finger was freshly injured at this point, right? He had a cast on it. The top of his right finger had been cut off two weeks prior. That is correct. And he had a pin in his finger, true? I don't recall when the pin was placed. A skin graft? I'm not quite sure. He had several different procedures and they were kind of spread out over a period of time. So I don't remember what happened and when One of those exactly. procedures was to treat the MRSA that got on his finger too, right? At some point I knew he had an infection and his right hand was in a bandage, right? It was casted. So it's your testimony that Mr. Depp was able to attack both you and your sister with his hand in that state, right? That is correct. He had a hard plaster cast on it. Debbie Lloyd was present in the penthouses when Mr. Depp supposedly attacked you. Isn't that correct? That's correct. In fact, you claim that Mr. Depp threw a Red Bull can at Miss Lloyd that evening. Yes, that's correct. And you put in a sworn statement to that effect in the UK case, right? That is correct. But that's not true, is it? That's what happened. You know what a deposition is, right, Ms. Heard? I've had several, yes. Yeah, so you know it's when someone provides testimony under oath. That is correct. You're aware that Ms. Lloyd was deposed in connection with this case, correct? That is true. And Ms. Lloyd's deposition testimony was played earlier in this trial, right? I'm gonna object, Your Honor, may we approach? All right. So in a deposition, Ms. Hurd, you know it's when someone provides testimony under oath, right? That's correct. And you're aware that Ms. Lloyd was deposed in connection with this case? That's correct. And Ms. Lloyd's deposition testimony was played earlier in this trial? Yes. So you heard Ms. Lloyd testify under oath that Mr. Depp never threw a can of Red Bull at her. I can't remember uh, if, she didn't rem if she didn't recall that or if she said it didn't happen. I don't remember. I vaguely sense she didn't recall anything. So it's your testimony that Miss Lloyd would forget that Mr. Depp, a very famous patient of hers, threw a can of Red Bull that nearly missed her, according to your version of events? To be fair, I just don't remember if she said when she testified that she didn't recall that incident or if it didn't happen. I don't remember what she testified to, but I have a vague sense that she didn't recall much at all. She recalled and she testified in this courtroom that Mr. Depp never threw a can of Red Bull at her. That was her testimony, wasn't it? I don't recall what her testimony was okay. with regards to that one incident, no. You actually filed a complaint against Ms. Lloyd's nursing license right before she was supposedly deposed in this case, didn't you? Uh, no, I don't, I don't believe I did. Are you aware that someone filed a complaint against Ms. Lloyd's nursing license in connection with her care of Mr. Depp for failing to report abuse? No, I had no idea. You're the first person to let me know about that. It's your testimony under oath. That wasn't you. But that is my testimony. I didn't even know about that until now. 
Travis McGivern was also present when Mr. Depp supposedly attacked you, correct? He walked in at some point. And you heard his testimony that it was actually you who punched Mr. Depp. Isn't that right? It's always been my own testimony that I hit Johnny. And, and you who was throwing things at Mr. Depp. I hit him in defense of my sister. I didn't have anything to throw at him. I never threw anything at him. I hit him when he attacked me and my sister. Specifically when he moved for her. That's when I hit him. Since your testimony under oath, you threw nothing at Mr. Depp. Mr. McGivern's lying. I have thrown things at Johnny, no, no, to no. be clear, not, not that occasion. That evening. Not, that occa not, not on that occasion. Since your testimony, Mr. McGivern, imagine that you were throwing things at Mr. Depp from the mezzanine level down towards where Mr. Depp and Mr. McGivern were standing. Well, he certainly wasn't going to say it about his client. Ms. Heard, you and Mr. Depp kept a journal together, didn't you? Yes, we did. You wrote each other messages in that journal, right? That is true. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 91. I'm only going to be showing you certain portions of this, so if we could please call this Plaintiff's Exhibit 91A. This is the journal that you and Mr. Depp kept with each other in electronic form, correct? That is correct. And if you, we could scroll through, these are all entries that you made in the journal, correct? Is it done? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'm going to move for the admission of Plaintiff's Exhibit 91A, and I've gone ahead and redacted Mr. Depp's writings as he, on hearsay grounds. I'm going to object, Your Honor. Maybe we approach. Okay. Let's start with the first page. It's a picture. Your Honor. I'm it's a picture. They haven't given me the pages yet. I'm writing them down. Okay, let's write them down first. Sorry, Judy. Let's write them down first. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, right. If we could please publish this to the jury. 91A in evidence. Thank you. Over objection. This is a picture that's on the inside cover of the love notebook, correct? That's correct. And this is a picture of you and Mr. Depp? That's correct. And you're in Australia in this picture, aren't you? Yes, but that's much later once we returned. You can see that Mr. Depp's right hand is bandaged, right? Yes, that's correct. That was after it had recovered significantly. That's not what it looked like uh, during the incident we were just talking about. So this is a picture after 
the events in Australia in March of 2015, correct? Yeah, yes, that photograph was taken months later. Can we have the jury look at that photograph again, please? Let's now turn to page three. This is a note you wrote in the journal to Mr. Depp, correct? That's what it looks like, yes. This is actually the first note you wrote to him in this journal. I don't remember what the first note was. The date on this note is May 22nd, 2015, correct? That is correct. That was during our honeymoon period. So this is just a little bit over two months after the events in Australia in March of 2015, right? That's correct. We were back in a honeymoon phase. That was the period of sobriety I spoke about yesterday. When Mr. Depp, after Mr. Depp had allegedly assaulted you with a bottle, right? It was after the stairs and it was after the Australia incident, yes. And yes. he got clean and sober and we went back to Australia. So it's also two months after Mr. you punched Mr. Depp because you allegedly thought he was going to throw your sister down the stairs, right? I hit him when he swung at my sister. And this is written months later, yes. You thought he was going to throw your sister down the stairs like he had thrown Kate Moss down the stairs, right? He swung at Whitney and I had heard a rumor, a vague rumor about that. And so it's what I thought of. In this first message to Mr. Depp in your journal, you write, quote, True love isn't about just the madness of passion or instead picking the safety of peace. No, it's about having both, falling madly in love with your friend. That is what has surprised me perhaps the most, that I have seen in you the true bones of friendship and respect. But of course, I still, perhaps more than ever, want to rip you apart, devour you, and savor the taste. Fret not, XX Slim. Yes, it's a love note. Did I read that correctly? Yes, you did. And you're slim, right? That's correct. Ms. Hurd, I'm now going to ask you to take a look at the very last entry you wrote in this journal, which seems to be from April 8th. That would be April 8th, 2016, correct? I'm, I'm not quite sure. I don't see the year written on there and I don't recognize it yet. It would be a couple weeks. April 8th would be a couple weeks before your birthday though, right? That's correct. Just to confirm, this is a note you wrote to Mr. Depp, right? That's what it looks like, yes. And on the second page of this note, you wrote the following. Quote, I'm sorry I can get crazy. I'm sorry I hurt you. Like you, I can get wicked when I am hurt, when I feel provoked, shattered. And last night I was. I felt abandoned about the Lily Rose thing, felt absolutely bewildered about your not coming home on my last night here, and was heartbroken and angry after many attempts in vain on my part to rectify the situation and make amends on the last night of what was otherwise a gorgeous trip with you. I'm so sorry for my part. None of this is meant to be an excuse for hurting you. Because the truth is, nothing is. There is never a reason good enough to hurt you. You are the last thing in the whole world who deserves it. Last person I ever meant to hurt. I love you, Steve. I am forever yours, Slim. Did I read that correctly? That's correct. Thank you. Ms. Hurd, let's take a look at Defendant's <coughs> Exhibit 423, which is already in evidence. This is a picture of you with what appears to be straight red marks on your arms, correct? Those are scars from the broken glass. And they're straight and red, right? I, um, I disagree with how you characterize that, um, but they are red, yes. And they're on your left arm? Yes, that's correct. Mr. do you have a history of cutting yourself, don't you? I do not. You cut your arm once as a teenager, isn't that right? No, I said I wanted to. Um, when I was put on birth control pills when I was a teenager, I got, I felt crazy. And I said I felt suicidal. So it's your testimony under oath that you didn't report to Dr. Hughes, your retained psychologist, 
that you had cut yourself as a teenager once? I said I had told my mom that I wanted to when I was a teenager. Ms. Heard, we heard some testimony from you yesterday about a trip you and Mr. Depp took on a train in Southeast Asia. Do you recall that? Yes, that's correct. That was when you and Mr. Depp went on your honeymoon trip, correct? That's correct. And that was in July of 2015? Yes, that sounds right. Let's take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 162, which is already in evidence. You were here in this courtroom, right, Ms. Heard, when Malcolm Connolly testified to taking this picture? That's correct. This is the picture, this picture shows an injury to Mr. Depp's face, doesn't it? I disagree. I've seen this, this is, picture. Uh, okay, Ms. Heard, I've seen I this got picture the answer. Thank before, you. And it, you disagree? He's not injured in it. He's not injured in this picture. Mm -hmm. That's your testimony, fine. This one is uh, Photoshop. Ms. Heard, I have your answer, thank you. This is the only photograph from our honeymoon that shows someone with an injury, correct? That's not true. We haven't seen any photos of injuries to your face from that train trip, have we? I don't believe my face was injured on that trip. Let's take a look at Exhibit 91A at page 46, going back to the Love Journal. This is a note from you to Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. This is a note you wrote on July 22nd, 2015. That is correct. And it starts off with the words, my husband, happy honeymoon, right? That's correct. Ms. Heard, please take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 91A at page 67. This is another note from you to Mr. Depp in your journal, right? That is correct. And this one is dated August 1st, 2015. That's correct. And you write, that's enough. You've held this book hostage long enough. Although I can't wait to read my note, I also couldn't wait to tell you how much I adore you. What a beautiful, extraordinary, magical, memorable, wonderful, stunning, surprisingly evolving and impulsive adventure. I couldn't have imagined a more gorgeous honeymoon. I love you more and more every passing day. XX Slim. Did I read that right? That is correct. Let's take a look at the journal entry starting on page 68. This is another entry from you writing to Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. And this one's dated August 2nd. That is correct, yes. And this one is a longer one, so let's go to where it ends on page 70 of the journal. And you write, quote, I hope that things said in anger and pain were just that, and that you miss and love me too, and that is what matters most to you. You may say you stand by everything you said and did, and that there is nothing you can learn from this, but I don't feel that way. And it's important for me that you know that. I love you and I'm sorry. I miss my warm, loving husband, XX Slim. That is correct. And sad, the word sad is crossed out. That is true. Next, we have a journal entry from you on page 89. This one's, this is another note from you to Mr. Depp. That is correct. The whole book is love notes. Mm -hmm. So this is dated August 15th, correct? That is correct. And here you write, quote, my love, why do we fight ever? Why? I love you more than anything else. Are we that uncomfortable with being vulnerable? Were we scared or is it something else? I don't know, but I'm sure of one thing. And if it's that I can't imagine living 
that I can't imagine my life without you. I love you. I will do better. I am sorry. X Slim. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. It's your testimony. This was a love journal. That is correct. It was primarily love notes and... And apology know, notes from you to Mr. Depp? The book was more of a love notebook, um, and part of that communication, obviously, since we fought so much, uh, it was important for me to, um, you know, try to nurture as much peace as we possibly could. And when things were good, they were really good. And it was also an opportunity for you to apologize to Mr. Depp for your behavior, isn't it? I think it's important in every relationship to apologize when you're trying to move past fights. Let's look at an entry from August 17, 2015, starting on page 90. Here you write, quote, I'm sorry I shook the wheels so hard. I'm sorry we've tested the shocks and brakes to this point. God damn, I love you, Johnny. I love you. I am tied to you forever, you know that? So I'm tasked with making this work for that reason and many others, of which there are many. Let me try to fix this. Let me try to patch this. Let me try to make your heart better. You deserve it. Hell, maybe even I do. I need you. We need each other. You're my cornerstone, my heart, my all. You are my life. I hate it when we fight. I hate having you hurt. I hate that you're hurting. I love you more than anything. Let me prove it. I need you. I love you, Slim. Should I read that correctly? Yeah, another example of me trying to fix it. I was always trying to fix it. Fix it by apologizing for your bad behavior? I tried everything. I tried apologizing, I tried reading, I tried therapist. I tried everything to fix it. But yet you couldn't change like you told Dr. Cowan, right? I couldn't change my relationship. Okay. Let's talk about December 15th, 2015 again. Aaron Filotti, your personal nurse, saw you two days after the incident on December 15th, 2015. Isn't that right? She did not see me as in a medical visit. She just dropped off meds in the late at night. She saw you personally though. Right? She physically saw me, but did yeah. not see me in a medical sense, the way a doctor might see a patient. She did not see me in that way. She was your personal nurse, right? She was a nurse assigned to me. I didn't hire her. Johnny did. She was assigned to you. And so when she would see you, it would be physically in person, in your home and traveling, correct? She would sometimes see me as like a medical professional would. And then other times she would just drop off meds and physically see me like as in with her eyes. You testified that during the incident on December 15th, 2015, Mr. Depp broke the bed, correct? That is correct. And more specifically, you described that he broke the bed frame with his boot while trying to get purchase. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 509, which is already in evidence. If we could please have that published to the jury. Thank you. Ms. Sir, this is a picture that you indicated depicts the broken bed, right? That's exactly it. And it's your testimony that Mr. Depp caused this damage to the bed with his boot, right? He did. Is that a pocket knife on the bed there? I cannot tell what's on the bed. Did you use that to damage the bed? Uh, I did not damage the bed. Johnny's boot did when he was punching me. I could feel him slipping. Mr. Do you also testify that there was blood all over the pillows on the bed, correct? On the pillow top, yes, that's correct. But you didn't take a picture of that though, did you? I did not take a picture of this. About a week after the December 15th, 2015 incident, you went with Mr. Depp and his children to the island of the Bahamas. Is that correct? To celebrate See, Christmas? The, uh, the, the incident was on the 15th and we went on the 23rd, I believe. While you were there, you did a photo shoot with Greg Williams, correct? Uh, a few days later, I think the photo shoot was about two weeks after this assault. 
Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 99. This is a photograph of you on Mr. Depp's island shortly after December 15, 2015, correct? Uh, no, this was taken weeks later. On the island, on that trip? It was taken on the island. On, on that, that trip. trip? Yes. Weeks later? Weeks later. December 15th, you traveled to the island December 23rd? That's your testimony? It's my recollection that this picture was taken on New Year's Eve or the first day of the year. I think New Year's Eve. And this is the photo shoot with Greg Williams, correct? That is correct. Right. I'm going to move to admit and publish. No objection. All right, 99, you can publish. Can we please have a zoom in to Ms. Hurd's face? Thank you, Tom. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 100. I'm gonna to move to admit and publish. No objection. All right, 100 in evidence, you can publish. Ms. Heard, this is another picture of you from that photo shoot, correct? Yes, this is the same photo shoot that you asked me about earlier, and this is um, several weeks later. If we could zoom in on Ms. Hurd's face. Thank you, Tom. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 101. And I'm going to move to admit and publish. Any objection? Uh, can we just have the foundation first, please? This is a picture from the photo shoot, Ms. Hurd, that was taken on the island. This is the same photo shoot, yes. Then no objection, Your Honor. All right, 101 in evidence, you can publish. If we could please scroll, zoom in, excuse me, Tom, on Ms. Hurd's face. Is your testimony misheard that you were wearing makeup for this photo shoot? That is correct. It's a photo shoot. Okay. If we could please pull up exhibit 102. Uh, Ms. Heard, is this another picture from the photo shoot? I can't exactly tell from the background. It looks like it, the, the same thing, but I can't really tell without it being this zoomed out. This is a picture of you though, right? It is a picture of me, yes. I'm gonna to move to admit and publish. All right, any objection? I'm not gonna object because she identified herself. I just, if she could identify uh, when it was taken, that would help. But I'm not gonna object. I'm not no, gonna object. No objection. No objection. Okay, there we go. 102 in evidence, you publish. Uh, let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 103. Three. Ms. Heard, this is yet another picture of you from that Greg Williams photo shoot, correct? That is correct. This is from the same shoot. I'm going to move to admit and publish. No objection. All right. 103 in evidence. Publish. And again, if we could zoom in on Ms. Heard's face. And finally, if we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 104. And Ms. Heard, this is a picture of you from that photo shoot, correct? Again, this is the same photo shoot weeks later. Uh, I'm going to move to admit and publish. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 104 in evidence, thank you. Again, if we could zoom in on Ms. Heard's face. Thank you, Tom. You testified that you and Mr. Depp got into a fight while on the island in December of 2015, correct? That's correct. And this all started because you perceived Mr. Depp as nodding off during the trip, right? I thought he was passing out again in a similar fashion to what he had done um, the previous year. And, and when he nodded off, he spilled wine on you, correct? 
Yeah, two, three times in a row. You testified that Mr. Duff's son, Jack, was there when this happened, right? Mm -hmm. At the beginning, he was there. He, he was there when Mr. Depp allegedly spilled wine on you two or three times, right? He was there for that because he offered me help. Right. You also testified that Mr. Depp then sexually assaulted you in the bathroom, correct? That's correct. And you testified that after this, you needed to get away from him, right? That is correct. So you ran out of the house? That's correct. And you admit you threw something at him, right? I did throw something in, at him to get away. You sat in this courtroom when Tara Roberts testified, right, Ms. Hurd? I did. She's Mr. Duff's manager on the island. Yes, that's correct. And you heard her testify that she witnessed an argument between you and Mr. Depp on the island in December of 2015, right? I, yes, that's correct, yes. And you heard her testify that Mr. Depp was trying to escape you, right? I don't know if she, I don't know if she characterized it like that, but that was the gist of it. She, she kind of misrepresented it to seem like that, yes. No, she misrepresented it. How convenient. That's correct. Okay, and then you kept apologizing to Mr. Depp, right? That's what no, that's Ms. Not Robert correct. said? Begging him to come back to the house with you. That's not correct. Clawing at him, she used those words. That's not correct. When she interrupted us, Johnny had me by the hair. Yelling at him. We were screaming, both of us, but uh, I don't know what she um, would have heard. And that you, she observed an injury on Mr. Duff's nose from something that you threw at him, right? I don't know what she observed. You also heard Ms. Roberts testify that she included all this information in a sworn statement in the UK in May of 2020. Isn't that right? That is correct. You put in a witness statement in response to Ms. Roberts' statement in June of 2020. Isn't that correct? In the UK? Um, I made several, I did several, I think seven witness statements and each one contained different information as per recent filings. That's what counsel has you do in that case. And in response to case. previous filings, correct? Including testimony from people that contradict your story? Sort of, so what you have to do is your counsel asks you to respond to things and you put it in a declaration of sorts and that happens back and forth over the course of preparing to go to trial in that country. And that's what I did. So that was your fifth witness statement submitted in the UK? I don't recall which one I was asked to comment on Tara Let, Roberts' testimony. I'll remind you. Um, if we could have Ms. Hurd's fifth witness statement from the UK. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Thank you. Directing your attention, Ms. Heard, to page six of your fifth witness statement. It's here that you describe the December 2015 incident, correct, on the island? Uh, I haven't read through the statement. I just don't know if I had commented on it before in a previous witness statement. As I said, there were several. But starting on page six, Ms. Heard, you describe the incident that took place on the island, correct? That's correct, but what I'm trying to say is I I'm not sure if I'd describe it in full okay. in this statement. Okay. I'm going to show you your confidential schedule to the fifth witness statement that accompanied the fifth witness statement in the UK. May I approach? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. In the confidential schedule to your fifth witness statement, paragraph one on page 21, 
You described Mr. Depp sexually assaulting you in the Bahamas of December 2015, right? That is correct. And that's the first time you ever claimed that Mr. Depp had sexually assaulted you in the Bahamas. That is incorrect. You only submitted the confidential schedule in the UK claiming Mr. Depp had sexually assaulted you after Ms. Roberts had said that she saw you on the island chasing, clawing at Mr. Depp. Isn't that correct? That is incorrect. If you could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 394. Your Honor, um, this is another recording I can represent to the court. This only contains Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's voices. Um, I'm going to move to admit the entire recording. I'm only going to play from 1-17-44 through 1-20-02. All right, any objection? Um, which, which plaintiff exhibit, Your Honor? 394. 394. I, I think I have no objection. All right, on. I'll go with that. All right. 394 in evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. Sleep and screaming in front of my kids and freaking Jack out. And that's trying. And we appreciate yeah, you're right. You're right, John. That fucked him up, you know. I'm sorry I fucked your son up. No, it, it weirded him out. It never. I'm so sorry I, I fucked your kids up. You didn't fuck my kids up, but I'm it so was pretty fucking, it was pretty fucking weird for him, you know. Because I jumped up and screamed and I wanted to. No, it's amazing. Yeah. You're right. I'm wrong. I'm surprised he's. I don't need your uh, no, right. your clever uh, comebacks. Yeah, so no, you're, you think you're, you're controlling your, yourself? Your character you is, think you're controlling your yourself? Your characters become so clear, especially when you use them. It's embarrassing for you. I'm going to walk away now because you're actually making it, making me seem even worse. And believe you me, I'm not going to be calling you at 3 o'clock in the morning after I've been you and Mr. Depp in that recording, right? That's correct. And you're discussing what happened in the Bahamas in December of 2015, right? Uh, no, that's not correct. We were discussing a part of it. You're discussing when you screamed at Mr. Depp in front of his children, correct? Uh, no, we were talking about a part of that argument. Including when you screamed at Mr. Depp in front of his children. That's not a fair characterization of what happened. Mr. Depp says you screamed at him when he accidentally spilled wine on you, correct? I realize that's what Johnny said. Yeah, and Mr. Depp tells you that this freaked out his son, Jack. Johnny often used other people to back him up in our arguments. You don't seem too concerned about that, do you? I had a lot of concerns. You don't seem, you don't mention Mr. Depp sexually assaulting you in this recording, do you? That was not the point of that conversation. If I had gotten into the details of what happened, to me with him, it would have been another fight. You just accused Mr. Depp of, quote, using his kids, right? And that recording- would often use other people, yes. And you challenge him to find a woman who 
will not, quote, jump up and scream if she has been spilled on three times in a row. That is correct. Not a woman who would put up with sexual abuse, right? I was pointing out uh, the ridiculous nature of him expecting me not to react to something that basic. Your Honor, would this be a good time for a break? All right, we can do that. That's Thank fine. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our morning recess for 15 minutes. Do not discuss the case with anybody. Don't do any outside research. We'll see you in 15, okay? Thank you. You'll be seated. All right. Your next question. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Hurd, you've testified repeatedly that you were concerned about Mr. Depp's substance use during your relationship, right? Yes, that's correct. But you weren't concerned enough to stop using drugs and alcohol yourself, were you? I did not use drugs when I was with Johnny, like in his presence, aside from the times I testified about with you. So you weren't concerned enough to stop using drugs and alcohol the times you testified to in front of the jury, right? As I testified to earlier, I took drugs um, in Johnny's presence on those two occasions um, early in our relationship in 2013. So you never changed your own behavior to support Mr. Depp and his sobriety, did you? I did a lot of changing to support his sobriety. I tried everything that I could possibly think of. But you drank wine around Mr. Depp on a regular basis, correct? I did drink wine. And you took Mr. Depp to Hicksville to do, quote, laffy drugs like mushrooms, end quote, right? That's correct. And you testified that despite what supposedly happened in Hicksville, you decided to take MDMA with Mr. Depp on a plane to Russia in June of 2013, correct? As I mentioned, those are the two occasions. You testified that this was the last time you would make that mistake, right? That is correct. And when asked if you would ask Mr. Depp to get you MDMA in Australia, you said that was, quote, ridiculous, right? That is correct. Because you had learned your lesson the hard way on the plane to Russia. Russia, yes, that's correct. Uh, yours and Mr. Depp's wedding in the Bahamas was in February of 2015, right? That is correct. So that would have been after the Russia flight. Yes, when I did, um, when we had mushrooms on the island for my hen party, my wet bridal party before. We were not with Johnny. I was not with Johnny at the time. It was your wedding with Mr. Depp on the island, right? To be clear, we were both on the same island. We just weren't around each other that evening. We had kind of separate parties, a bridal party and a groom's party. And, and your wedding was a month before Australia, correct? That is correct. And you arranged to have drugs at your wedding, correct? Uh, like I said, we had mushrooms um, for my bridal party beforehand. On the island for your wedding? Before the wedding. On the island? On the island, yes. Okay. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1262? This is an email you sent on February 1st, 2015, correct? That is correct. Uh, yes, that's correct. I'm going to move to admit and publish plaintiff's exhibit 1262. Any objection? Yes, I'm going to move up. Yeah, sure.
Your Honor, if we could please have Ms. Hurd's email published to the jury. All right, 1262 in evidence. This is a schedule for your wedding weekend, right, Ms. Hurd? No, it's not. It's a proposed draft of a schedule. It ended up being quite different. Do you not. see where it says 7 p.m. rehearsal dinner? Yes, I see that. And the next item on the list says, quote, after dance party and drugs and music, end quote, right? That is correct. So you plan to have drugs at your wedding to someone you characterize as a drug addict? To be fair, we were going to have separate parties, as I mentioned. So a bridal party before this, the schedule ended up changing quite a bit. And this is a draft clearly that was sent before there were a lot of changes made. The bridal so party. Your original and the idea, heard, heard, your original idea was to have a rehearsal dinner with your husband, the drug addict, the monster, um, and then do drugs with your girlfriends on the island after your rehearsal dinner. I realize that's what the email suggests, but that wasn't no, a plan. No, it's not what it suggests, Ms. Heard. It's what you said in that email. Right, but what I'm trying to say is that the schedule ended up changing. We ended up doing the little... So your original like, idea was to do drugs. Before. Yeah, your idea, original idea was to do drugs on an island after your rehearsal dinner to the drug-fueled monster that you were about to marry, right? The, the, as the email suggests, there, were go there was going to be weed on the island. This does not reference the cuddle puddle that I just referenced to you. You like to do drugs on special occasions, right, Ms. Hurd? I have before. And, and you did drugs again for your 30th birthday, right? That is correct. That was a huge mistake. Your 30th birthday dinner was on April 21st, 2016? Yes, it was the day before my birthday, correct. And you testified that Mr. Depp was running late to the celebration, correct? That is correct. And you asked Mr. Depp to bring you alcohol when he arrived, is that right? So the utility closet where we kept the wine was right by the elevators. And I also told him he could bring in a joint. I wouldn't bite his head off if he did. So that's a yes? That's correct. I, I told him I wouldn't be angry. Okay. Let's look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 1263. Your Honor, I'm going to ask to show, first of all, this one hasn't been produced. This is not, it's a brand new trial exhibit, so I don't have it. I'd like an unredacted copy, and then I'd like an unredacted copy to be shown to the witness. Sorry, do you have an unredacted copy? We can, we can make one, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, may we approach about right. this?
I'm going to show the unredacted messages to um, counsel for Ms. Hurd on a laptop because I don't have a hard copy. Okay. Yeah, could, could we, let's just pause for a minute. I don't see What's that? So, Ms. Hurd, I'm only going well, to... Your Honor, I'm going to object to asking questions while I'm looking at this. No, if you could give her a moment, please. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Okay. So, any objection? 1263 as redacted? No, no, Your Honor. All right, 1263 in evidence. So, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Heard, directing your attention to the plaintiff's exhibit 1263, and this is a text message that you sent to Mr. Depp, correct? That is correct. And, and you sent this message to Mr. Depp the day you had your 30th birthday dinner, right? That is correct. And you write, quote, hey baby, bring up something to drink and or a joint. I'm in if you are, see you in a minute, question mark, XX. Did I read that right? That is correct. And then the next day you went to Coachella and consumed MDMA and mushrooms, right, Ms. Heard? I did, Johnny was not there for that. Right. Let's talk a little bit more about your 30th birthday. You testified about this incident multiple times, haven't you? That is correct. But yesterday you told this jury that you were not called upon to provide a detailed accounting of all physical and sexual abuse by Mr. Depp until February, 2020. Is that correct? I testified that I had not been able to do so until February, 2020 in uh, uh, outside of the context of a cold deposition. Actually, I, I misspoke. February, 2022, this year. Right, sorry. I. I did the same thing you did. Okay. And you did some. You did that in something called an interrogatory. Is that correct? The interrogatory response was the first time that I could do that outside of the context of being asked the certain questions in a deposition. And and you testified about your thirtieth birthday in this interrogatory, correct? I believe so. Yes. Yes. Nonetheless, you testified to a new detail about your thirtieth birthday for the first time in this courtroom, didn't you? Uh, no, that's incorrect. A sexual assault, no less. I had just not placed when that happened. I was never, I was never sure if that was the same time that he did that on the night of my birthday, and I maintained that as well in my deposition. You told this jury that the evening of your thirtieth birthday dinner, Mr. Depp quote grabbed you by the pubic bone, pubic area, end quote, end quote, pushed you down, right? That is correct. This detail isn't in your interrogatory response, is it, Ms. Heard? That detail is in my interrogatory response, yes. Let's pull up your interrogatory response. If we could please bring up... Um, Ms. Bredehoff? Thank you. May I approach your honor? Yes, ma'am. Thank you.
We can go to your interrogatory responses at page 57. These are signed under the penalty of perjury, correct? That is correct. And you testified again to this jury that this was the first time you were given an opportunity to write down everything and include all your evidence, right? That is correct. Okay. So let's go to page 57. At the top of page 57, Johnny and I were not in a good place. I begged him to make my birthday dinner. Do you see that? That is correct. Okay, so starting on page 57, you start describing your birthday dinner, correct? That is correct. All right. On page 59 of your interrogatory response, you write, Fourth paragraph down. Johnny grabbed me while holding me down and I remember him asking me if I thought I was so tough. He asked me three, four times up close to my face. You're so tough. Are you such a tough guy, huh? You think you're so tough. What are you gonna do now? I stood up at some point after getting off the ground. Do you see that? That is correct. And then you write after, I remember crying. I remember feeling exhausted and frustrated. And it hit me, meaning the realization of how sad it was that I was going to wake up tomorrow on my birthday without him. That's correct. Okay. Where in this interrogatory response, Ms. Heard, you describe Mr. Depp, quote, grabbing you by the pubic bone, pubic area, and pushing you down. On page 64. Where? Page 64, uh, one, two, three paragraphs down. Johnny grabbed me once, did this taunting thing on the side of the bed in penthouse three. He grabbed my vagina and held me there, asked me if I was so tough. You're not describing what happened after your 30th birthday? I am, I just had not prescribed it to that date with the limited evidence I had at the time, only in the course of looking at the evidence, preparing for this case, have I put those two pieces together. But I've always said what happened. You were upset that Mr. Depp was late to your 30th birthday, weren't you? I was. You knew Mr. Depp had a scheduled business meeting or a money meeting that evening, right? No, I knew he said he did. I didn't know if he had one. Addicts lie all the time. So you didn't trust him? I took it with a big grain of addict salt. Okay. And Mr. Depp texted you that evening to let you know he'd be late, correct? Yes, he did text me at some point. It was a big deal to you that Mr. Depp was late to your birthday dinner, wasn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, it did matter to me. And you were upset he was late. I was, I was hurt. And when he finally did arrive, you felt quote, invisible to him, right? I did. The day after your birthday dinner, you and your friends went to Coachella to celebrate your birthday. Is that correct? That is correct. You made a video driving to Coachella with your friends, didn't you? That is correct. I'd like to pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1264. And for the record, Your Honor, this only has um, music without any words on it. And again, it's a new one, so I'd like a copy of it. It's Let's going it. to be played. There, There is no sound other than a Thank song. You, yes, sir.
Any objection? Any objection? No, you're on. All right. Okay. Twelve six. We publish this to the jury. Evidence yes, with a sound. This is a video you made when you drove to Coachella with your friends after your 30th birthday, right? That's correct. I'm not quite sure which one of us made the video, but that's correct. You're featured in that video, driving. That's correct. And it's set to the song Miss You by the Rolling Stones, is that right? That's correct. That was a message for Mr. Depp, wasn't it? No, that's ridiculous. You consumed drugs at Coachella, didn't you? Yes, I did. You took MDMA and mushrooms at the same time. I, I did, yes. And it made you feel sick, right? I felt horrible, yes. So you left Coachella? Yes, that's correct. You testified yesterday that, yesterday that when you left Coachella, you left with, quote, your entire group. That is correct. And you were, quote, never alone with Starling, right? That is correct. You weren't anywhere near him? Not alone, no. You sat here when Starling Jenkins testified that he collected you from Coachella when you were sick, right? He picked up my entire group. And Mr. Jenkins testified, quote, I collected her, got her in the vehicle. She didn't want anyone else to know that she was sick. Take her back to the Parker, which I assume was in reference to the hotel, alone. I took her to 7-Eleven where I retrieved hydrating fluids, Advil, and let her have those. Got her back up to the Parker, got her in the suite, and then went back to pick up everyone else. You were there when Mr. Jenkins testified, right? Yes, he was wrong. So it's your testimony that Mr. Jenkins is lying. He's just wrong. I don't know what his intentions are. He was just wrong about that. We were- 1229, which is already in evidence, at 1720 through 2128. what really happened the evening of your 30th birthday, isn't it, Miss Hurd? No, Ms. that's incorrect. Mr. Depp was in bed, and then you came around the bed and started punching him. That's incorrect. You don't deny that in the recording, do you, Miss Hurd? I'm not having that conversation with Johnny. I'm not denying anything. I'm not saying anything. I'm not having that conversation with Johnny. I was trying to get out of that hotel room. Uh, that was a mediation attempt. That was the recording you just heard. It was us meeting in a hotel. But you're talking about your 30th birthday. No, we're not. But you're not talking about going to Coachella and... Johnny's talking about that. I am not arguing with him about any of that. Right. You don't deny anything, do you? I'm not talking to him about that. Okay. Going to um, publish exhibit or ask that the witness be shown exhibit 1265.
to see you and your friends at Coachella, correct? That is correct. I'm going to move to admit plaintiffs 1265 and publish it. No objection. All right, 1265 in evidence. You can publish it. There's no injuries to you. Are there, Ms. Heard, visible in this picture? You cannot see any visible injury, no. Thank you, Tom. Ms. Heard, you remember during Mr. Depp's examination, a number of recordings were played, correct? That's correct. And in one of those recordings, you told Mr. Depp, quote, I hope to God Jack's stepfather teaches him more about being a man than your fucking, your fucking left nut, end quote. Do you remember that? I do not remember what exactly I could hear of that recording. I remember I heard, heard myself make a mention of uh, Jack's new stepfather or potential stepfather, I can't recall. Jack is Mr. Depp's son, right? That is correct. And I believe that the, I was referencing a marriage that his ex-partner was going to have or getting into, I suppose. You were referencing that uh, Jack's new stepfather would teach him how to be a man because Mr. Depp couldn't. I right. don't recall exactly what I said, but it was something to that effect. Let's listen to some of what happened before you said that uh, to Mr. Depp. Um, if we could please play Plaintiff's Exhibit 397, which is already in evidence. And for the record, it's at 3504 through 3547. And then the next clip is 3635 through 4308. Oh, come on. Oh, 
Oh, come on. Lay it on me. What else? What else other things do you want to add? You your life. He says, you what? Oh, no, I want to know. I want to know. I'm kind of waiting. Go get it. Wait, there's no other place for you to run in your 15 other houses to go run. Come on, go be a real married man. Go deal with your shit the way that a man does. Go run to the next house. Every man does. Yeah. Go. go run away. I know it's hard to look at yourself. fucking ridiculous plan. It's you hard. Panic fucking plan. It's hard. It's hard. You're screwing everybody else over. You're right. I tried. That's what I do. You're the most spoiled fucking plan. <laughs> You got everybody out here almost oh, full, but it don't right. last long. You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. You got to figure it out. You don't you have to figure out what you have to offer <laughs> as opposed to going out and get your kids out. You're right. That's what I do. Well, yeah. Okay. Let me give this excellent. You're right. You're excellent right. choice. Back to that. Well, I wonder what we else... <laughs> I wonder what else we can reach for in the last 60 minutes. <laughs> Oh, no, it was for you. You're right. So I'm sure there's other things you can find. Don't laugh. No, I'm not laughing. Or, uh, no, matter of fact, I'm laughing. not laughing. I'm not. It's oh. serious. I'm sure you can find other things. Oh. <laughs> I know, I know. And stripping. Yeah. Well, there's always no. that. You can You're right. You can write a book. For you another, can write a book. I know. Thing. You can write a book. Oh, is this going to be good for your book? Oh, should I have you sign an NDA for your book? You don't your book. Is this going to be good for your book? Is this going to be good for your book? Hey. I don't hey. I don't I have a good idea. I'll have, have you somewhere of your journals. You don't want to sell out or anything. Let's sell you journals. Oh, wait. Hey. Hey, you know, no, yeah, you're not what? No, 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 you're not selling you out. Sell out. No, magic, no. You don't want to sell out. Yeah, because no one does. Jump 21 drunk straight when they're in their 20s. No, you're right. That's not selling out. No. When you're in your 20s, you should really know what you want. Like selling your journals. I don't <laughs> if, you didn't, if you didn't know who the fuck I was. You're right. Go sell your journals if you're real young. Uh, 55 year old. Or, oh, I'm sorry. 50. 6. 2. 51. I don't know. It doesn't matter at this point. No. I don't think so. I don't really think so. But you're right. I mean, hey, at least I didn't do like a TV show where I was hard for in my twenties. God, that would be like embarrassing. Oh. If only I was with someone in their fifties that could point that out to me. Imagine Mike, you're right. When you play a non sexualized object. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. You're right. You got you got it all figured out. I don't even know what movies I've done. You haven't even taken an interest. If only I could be like you. If only I could be like I had to watch your fucking direct and you trying to like spew out the fucking lines. You're a joke. You're a joke. Yeah, I'm the joke in the industry, Amber. I'm the joke. I'm the joke in the industry. I can't really hear you. I'm sorry. The reruns of all my bullshit are playing too loud for me to hear you. I'm gonna just go and pedal my way back. Sorry, I can't hear you. Aquaman. Oh, it's twenty months, whatever it was. I was like, I was twenty. No one cares. <laughs> you fucking watch Washed up piece of oh, shit. What? Uh, what? What? Washed up piece what? of shit. I <laughs> Your jealousy is so tragic. Your jealousy is so tragic. Fucking like thinking that I'm going on a road with a band. You told Mr. Depp to, Depp to suck your dick multiple times, didn't you? Yes, I did. You tell him to go run to his 15 other houses, right? That's correct. Because that's what he would do when you behave like this, isn't it? Eventually, he would go and stay in one of the other houses. You call him a sellout, don't you? I was expressing frustration uh, about his criticism of my career and how many problems that caused within the dynamic of our relationship, yes. So you call him a sellout and a joke? I called him horrible, ugly things, as you can hear. 
sell out. We spoke to each other in a really horrible way. Pretty sure we just heard you speak to him in a really horrible way. You called him a sellout. I just disagree. Right, Heard. Um, you oh, called him I, a sellout, right, Miss Heard? I called him a lot of ugly things. And a joke. I called him a lot of ugly things. You called him a joke on that recording. You called him a washed up piece of shit. I think we both called each other that on that uh, occasion, yes. Mr. Depp mentions Aquaman, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Mr. Depp got you that role in Aquaman, didn't he? Excuse me? Mr. Depp got you that role in Aquaman, didn't he? No, Miss Vasquez, I got myself that role by auditioning. That's Mr. how that Depp works. says, quote, your jealousy is so tragic. I heard him say that, yes. You were the jealous one in this relationship, weren't you, Miss Heard? I think he was indicating I was jealous of his career. But now you've twisted it to say it was Mr. Depp that's the jealous one. Johnny's always been very jealous when I worked, when I did anything, friends. Yes, he's always been very jealous. Mm -hmm. Mr. Heard, I'm going to ask you to take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 120E. This is a series of text messages uh, between you and Mr. Depp. That is correct. Um, I'm going to move to admit and publish these text messages. Um, Mr. Depp's messages have been redacted. All right, any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, 120E and evidence, you can publish. Starts with a text message from you to Mr. Depp on September 26, 2015, right? That is correct. You write, Monster is back. This is him. Did I read that right? That is correct. And then in the next message, you write, quote, Ran away, first sign of trouble. This is not the man you promised you would be. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. Then in the next one down, you write, Promised, swore to me you would be. That right? is correct. The non-monster. Miss Heard, you're talking about Mr. Depp running away from you at the first sign of trouble, aren't you? No, I'm, um, I'm recognizing the clues at this point when he would run away at the first sign of trouble. Often that was a clue for me to know that he was back using again and that we were about to enter the next phase of the cycle. And you describe his running away from you as the monster, right? That wasn't what was a monster. The monster was the man who beat me up. The running away was just a, attached to that. It was a sign, a signal to me as a clue, as somebody trying to put together clues um, that we were entering into, into that phase. But in these messages, Ms. Heard, exactly. monster isn't Mr. Depp doing drugs, is it? It was always um, the man who did drugs and beat me up. Yes, that's always been the monster. That's not what you're saying in these messages. That is exactly what I'm saying in the messages. You don't describe Mr. Depp being violent, do you? I do not describe that in this text message, no. So it's a cowardly monster this time? No. Okay. And going down the page, you write a long series of text messages to Mr. Depp that don't get a response. Is that correct? That is correct. You write, come groan, face the shit, and we can do anything. You go on a little later to say, please come home. Let's apologize to each together. And continuing on page 77, you write, not go to bed mad. And then you say, sound okay? Sound like the priority in the long run? Come home. Don't be the monster. Be the man, please. Please call me, please. Continuing on page 78. You write, I don't want the monster. I need my man. I need to talk to you. Please, Johnny, don't force me to be something else to you. This is taking me for granted and I can never stop before this turns into something far darker describing yourself in that text message, right? The exact opposite. I'm trying to interrupt him starting a new cycle where he starts using again. He's I'm not responding to you, to... Ms. Heard. Yeah, that's why I'm trying yeah. to desperately stop him. Please answer the phone, you say. Doesn't this mean anything to you? And it goes on. And I won't read all these messages, but you're saying, please answer. 
over and over again, right? It was very important to me. I was running out of time and I was trying desperately to stop him. He wasn't with you, Miss Heard. Exactly, which is how I knew it was about to get a lot worse. He would leave, use, and come back way worse, with way less reality, with more delusions. He'd be more drunk. He'd I'm be gonna more under the influence. I'm going to move to strike everything after. I was trying to stop the answer that. Answer to her question. No, no. Your Honor, she was responding. I'll, I'll, I'll overrule the objection. That's fine. Thank you, Your Honor. This is a situation where you were trying to get Mr. Depp to pay attention to you, isn't that right? No, I was trying to stop him from using. And because he ran away from you at the first sign of trouble, you call him a monster. I right? was trying to stop him from turning into the monster. The drugs are the, are the key that open the door. Who was the real monster in this relationship, Miss Heard? Lives in Johnny, half of Johnny. It's not all of Johnny. The other half of him is wonderful and beautiful and the man I love. I'd like you to take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 120F. There's another set of text messages between you and Mr. Depp, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I'm gonna to move to admit and publish. Any objection? No, you're on. All right, 120F in evidence, you can publish. <laughs> this is a set of text messages and it's from October, 2015. Do you see that? Yes, I do. In fact, you sent all of these messages to Mr. Depp on October 22nd, 2015, isn't that right? Exactly, the same thing was happening here. And again, I'm not going to read them all, but you start off again by trying to get Mr. Depp's attention, right? You write, please come home. I was trying to stop another bender. You write, please come home, right? That is correct. Please answer. Don't break us up. Please answer. Please. And continuing on page 97, you write, give me some piece of your heart. Please. No fight. I promise. Please. No fights. Please just pick up. Please give me two minutes. I'm dying. Please. And continuing on page 98, you write, please come home. Please come home, Baba. I am so sorry. Actually, you didn't say Baba, you said baby. Apologies. And it goes on. Did I read those correctly? That is correct. That was another time I'm trying to stop another twist off. This is what would happen when Mr. Depp would try to take some space from you, right? No, this is what would happen when Johnny had moved into the next phase of the cycle, decided to use, no, and our lives Heard, were getting a lot worse at that Ms. time. Ms. Heard, I'm talking about your actions. This is what you would do to Mr. Depp when he would leave you. You would harangue I would, him. I would try to. Is that to, correct? You would, would harangue him. Your Honor, at least let her answer the question. I'm sorry. interrupting you. That's fine. Go ahead and answer the question. Uh, I do not think uh, I would characterize my behavior that way. I was trying to stop him from using. You were texting him incessantly. Isn't that correct, Ms. Heard? It was imperative for my life. Ms. Heard, it was very important to me. My question is much more simple. You were texting him incessantly. I would yes try or no. everything to Ms. get Heard? a hold of him and so to stop yes. the cycle. That's a yes, right? I would try everything to stop the cycle. It was that important to me. And he's the monster for not responding to you. That's not what made him the monster. For no. needing space from you. The monster was not the guy who needed space. The not monster was who drugs. he was when he came back. Not for doing drugs, Miss Heard. Not for being violent. Just for needing space. That's when you called Mr. Depp the monster. Incorrect. Okay. Let's listen to Defendant's Exhibit 598C, which is already in evidence. Let's not do this anymore because I'm really getting frustrated and I'm really, really, really sick of this argument. Stop. I'm sorry. Okay, so let me go and you go and I'll speak to you in a couple hours. Okay? Okay? Stop. Okay. Why are you saying stop? Please, May please, please, I so, go? Please, it causes me so much stress when you leave, when you walk away from me with that. It's like you're, you don't understand how much worse you're making this. Please, you're making it worse for me. Okay, I'm sorry for you. Please, I'm only trying to tell you so that you know you're causing me immense stress right now when you walk away like that. There's no reason to be mad. Well, then say goodbye. I haven't walked away. You're not saying goodbye. You won't let me fucking leave. Let me leave. Oh 
Stop rushing me! Stop pushing me in the corner and then poking me with a stick and then saying, why are you saying the words you want me to say? Stop poking me! Stop rushing me! Stop throwing me against the wall! I'm going, what? You don't like that wall? You don't like the fucking wall? Stop pushing me! I'm not pushing you. I'm rushing you. I said, I need space. I don't want this conversation anymore right now. I need space. And I will take my space, whether you like it or not. I will take it. And you will take your space. But if you keep I'm not halting I'm not doing anything this to you. and continuing I'm with not the rhetoric, doing it. I'm ble- begging you to stop. I don't. Okay, stop. I'm just. I'm stopped. I'm stopped. Now I have to go. Okay? So we will speak to each other in a couple of hours. Okay? I'll give her some kind of revelation makes you feel better. You know? I hope I do too. But uh, we'll just see when I get home. We'll just talk or we won't talk or we, you know, we'll finish this or we won't finish it. But this is not love. Please this is not happiness. This stop. is not. This please is, stop doing this. Please, you're causing so much fucking stress. I'm gonna die. This ain't, I'm gonna fucking die. You're causing me so much stress. Please stop. Please, I, I feel like I have heart attack almost every day. Please stop. Please then, then stop you, doing why? it. Please stop. He's so fucking mean. Why are you fucking with me? Bully. Stop. Please stop. I've been begging you not to fight. I just said, can we please have a normal argument? Just even a normal conversation, fucking normal argument. And for the last hour, I've been begging you to please just leave it at that. Let's just go on with our night. I would have been able to come in with you. We would have been able to let it go in a few minutes. It would have been fine. It would just if we allowed ourselves to have fucking normal arguments. Please, you're killing me with this. You're killing me. You're fucking killing me. <laughs> Fuck. Sean, could you, uh, please, I-, I want you to just go, I want you to take your medicine or whatever. I'm sorry that I've upset you. Yeah, I think, thank you, Sean. I'm ready to go. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry. I'm really ready. Thank That's you and Mr. Depp in the recording, correct, Ms. Heard? That's correct. You just won't let him go, will you? That's not true. We were outside of his studio and he wanted to go and use. It was a pretext. The, the, the claim that he was upset with me was a pretext so that he would go, and, go on a bender. I knew that pattern by the time this recording happened. Is your testimony now that you were outside Mr. Depp's studio? I believe that the he was recording gonna go was... Use? Excuse me? He was going to go use drugs? That's your testimony now? We were outside his studio, his man cave house, if you will, in the car, I believe, during that recording. And he was going to go inside and use? That was the pattern. And as you can hear from my voice, I'm very, very, very scared of entering into the next cycle under under what I had been conditioned to understand we were at at that point in our relationship. That's not true, is it, Ms. Heard? Mr. Depp was trying to go inside his house to see his daughter, Lily Rose. She might have been over that day, but so that's not your what he was getting now. out of the car to do, and that's not what I was stopping him from doing. Okay. Let's play the beginning part of that recording where Mr. Depp tells you that he wants to go inside to see his daughter. And let's not do this anymore, because I'm really getting frustrated, and I'm really, really, really sick of this argument Stop. I'm sorry. okay so let me go and you go and i'll speak to you in a couple hours okay okay stop. okay why are you saying stop may he's, he's i so- go we'll circle back to this but it's your testimony that you were outside mr depp's studio we were in the car you were in the car outside mm-hmm. of Mr. Depp's studio. That's correct. And he wasn't telling you, please let me go inside my house to see my daughter. He was indicating to you that he wanted to go inside to do drugs. That's your testimony. I know my testimony is that I knew what he was going inside to go do. Okay. I knew what stage of the cycle we were in. I knew the patterns by then. And I was desperately out of time trying to interrupt that cycle. 
Let's go to May of 2016. Uh, yesterday, Ms. Heard, uh, Ms. Bredehoff, your attorney, showed you certain pictures um, from May 21, 2016. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Okay. If we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 710, which has already been admitted in, into evidence. Ms. Heard, you testified yesterday that this is a photograph taken of you on May 21st, 2016. Do you recall? Yes, that's correct. And keeping this exhibit up, if we could please do a split screen, Tom, and also pull up Defendant's Exhibit 714, which has already been admitted with redactions. Ms. Heard, you testified yesterday that this is the photograph that was also taken on May 21st, 2016, correct? Yes, although the one to the right might have been taken the next uh, day. I can't be sure. The reason I say that is because there's light in the background. So it looks like it was taken in the daytime, which means maybe it was the next day. Didn't you testify that you uh, took different lighting, pictures in different lightings that on is, May 21? That is correct, yes. Okay. And, and you're wearing two thin necklaces in this picture on the right. Is that correct? That is correct. You testified that these pictures were taken the same night. The one on the right looks like it was taken in the daytime because I can see the daylight behind me. But you testify that they were taken the same day. Uh, I don't know if I, I think I testified that they came from the same incident of the same day, not necessarily taken on the same day. Okay. Let's please pull up defendant's exhibit 712, which has already been admitted. Uh, you testified yesterday, this is another photograph of you on the night of May 21. That's correct. And keeping this exhibit up, can we please do a split screen and also pull up Defendant 713, which has already been admitted. Ms. Heard, you testified yesterday, this is also a photograph of you from the same night, correct? That is correct. You testified yesterday that the only difference between these two photographs is that the light was turned on. That's what it appears to be, yes. The light is on on both of these pictures though, isn't that right? It looks to me like the one on the left has the vanity light, the makeup lights, you know, the more yellow hued ones that go around the mirror on. And then the one on the right looks like it doesn't have those. Isn't it true you just edited these photographs? No, I've never edited a photograph. Didn't you just enhance the saturation for one of these photos to make your face look more red? Uh, no, that's incorrect. I didn't touch it. You were sitting here in this courtroom when Mr. Isaac Baruch testified to see you, seeing you the week after May 21, 2016, correct? I was here. Mr. Baruch testified that he saw you on May 22nd while you were changing the locks of your penthouse. Do you recall that testimony? I do. I just don't know if he was right about the date, but I do remember him saying that. Testified it was his birthday, the day after his birthday. I believe it was. Yeah. Mr. Baruch testified that he saw you repeatedly in the days following also correct? That's correct. And Mr. Baruch testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face, correct? That is what he's testified to. You were also here in this court when Mr. Sean Bett testified to seeing you on the evening of May 21, 2016. Is that right? Um, you were here. That's correct. Mr. Bett also testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face that evening, correct? I realize that's what he said. You were sitting here in this courtroom when Officer Melissa Sines testified by deposition about being called to the Eastern Columbia building on May 21st, 2016, right? I saw her testimony, yes. And you heard Officer Sines testify that she did not see any injuries on you that night, correct? I heard her testify she did not consider this injured. No, Ms. Officer Sines testified that she met with you and she did not see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct? She did not consider this injury. Ms. Heard. My question is a bit more nuanced. So is my answer. Yeah.
Tom, can we put these down, please? I think they might be confusing the witness. My question is more nuanced. You sat in this courtroom while Officer Sines testified that she saw you the night of May 21, 2016, face to face and didn't see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct, Ms. Hurd? I believe she was testifying about these photographs and she said that I was not injured in them. Is it your testimony under oath now that Officer Sines testified that she saw injuries on you when she saw you in person on May 21? Sorry, let me clarify. I was testifying that I know that that's what Officer Sines said, that she didn't consider my red puffy face injured. That's what she said. The red puffy face, that was your counsel's question, correct? That was she her said, testimony in the UK. That's incorrect, and you know that, Ms. Heard. I disagree. It's just inconvenient for you that Officer Sines didn't see injuries on you on May 21, 2016. Isn't it doesn't matter right? what's convenient for me. Right. Officer Tyler Haddon also testified by deposition about being called to the Eastern Columbia building on May 21, 2016. And he also testified no injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that correct? They both said that they did not consider me injured. They did not see injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that what their testimony was? What their testimony was is that they did not consider what my face looked like to be injury. They didn't consider what they walked on in the house damage, but it was. You were sitting here when Officer William Gatlin testified by deposition about being called on May 21 to the Eastern Columbia building, and he also did not observe any injuries on you, did he? he and that's what he testified to. He didn't even know which one I was. No, I think we all saw on video camera, you identify yourself, isn't that correct? I had to because of how far away he was. He didn't even know, he didn't even know who he was. But after you see. identified yourself, he looked at you. Isn't that correct? From a distance, yes. And he didn't see any visible injuries either, did he? I don't know what he saw. He testified that he didn't see any visible injuries, did I he? I would believe that he didn't, yes. You were also in this courtroom when Alejandro Romero, who worked at the front desk at the Eastern Columbia building, testified about seeing you on May 25th, 2016. Isn't that correct? That is correct. I think he said the 25th. Yeah. And Mr. Romero testified that he didn't see any swelling or bruises on your face when you were talking to him at the front desk. He wouldn't have. No, he wouldn't have, even though he had a habit because his parents taught him correctly to look into someone's eyes when speaking to them. Isn't that correct? I know that's what he testified to. Yes. Yeah. You testified yesterday that you sought a temporary restraining order on May 27th, 2016, because you wanted to change your locks. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, I do. Those locks were to the penthouses at the Eastern Columbia building, isn't that correct? That's correct. But you changed the locks to the penthouses on May 22nd, 2016. I attempted to. That's why you felt comfortable having James Franco over the evening of May 22nd, 2016, Ms. Hurd? I do not know when, I do not know when James came over. Okay, let's remind you. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 304, which is already in evidence, and play from 254 through 439?
That's you and Mr. Franco on May 22nd, 2016, right, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. And you're taking him up to the penthouses, aren't you? That's where I lived, yes. And it's past 11 p.m. at night, isn't that right? I'm not quite sure of the time it looked, it looked like that. Why don't we pull that video back up? Twenty-two fifty-one. Almost midnight, right? It's uh, or, oh, excuse me, almost eleven o'clock at night. Exactly. Okay. You knew Mr. Depp was out of town the week of May twenty-one, two thousand sixteen, didn't you? I don't know what I knew of his schedule at the time. You knew Mr. Depp was out of town on May twenty-seventh when you went to get the domestic violence restraining order, isn't that right? I don't know if I knew that at the time. You knew, you knew Mr. Depp was heading out on a European tour that week, isn't that right? I'm not quite sure what I understood of his schedule at that time. You knew he wouldn't be back for weeks, right? No, that's incorrect. Let's uh, go back to that recording. It's uh, Defendant's Exhibit 598. Uh, so you testified that you and Mr. Depp were in the car outside of his studio. Is that right? Yes. And you were trying to prevent him from going into his studio to do drugs, right? Uh, yeah, to effectively start another cycle. Right. Not that Mr. Depp was just trying to go into his house to see his daughter, right? His daughter might be one of the people that was in the house at that time, but that's so neither here nor there. That your testimony is now again Mr. from entering a cycle. Your testimony is now that Mr. Depp does drugs in front of his children? Well, first of all, I know he does. Um, second of all, it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have stopped him from using with his friends, which is the problem, not whether or not his daughter was there. Okay. Um, let's play, please, Defendants 598 at 49.48 through 50.35. Fifty thirty-five. I'm not. I'm itching. I don't want to be doing this. I, I want it just to. Do why don't you that. just say, "Okay, baby, I understand. I'll go home and you do your thing, hang out with your daughter, and then I'll see you in a couple of hours and we'll talk about it." Is it that difficult to say that, or you just fucking hate me and you want to be shitty about it? Please, just fucking. It's not that difficult. Okay? I don't want to stand here in a driveway and argue with you. Okay, well, I'll see you in a little bit, okay? Please? Please. Just let me know if you're going to go somewhere. Just let me know, please, so I know. And almost an hour later, you're still arguing with Mr. Depp outside, right? I don't know how long that argument lasted, no. Okay. Ms. Hurd, you testified about seeking a domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, correct? Yes, I have. And how you wanted to do it discreetly? That's correct. That you wanted as much privacy as you could have? Yes, that's correct. And how you walked out to a sea of paparazzi and cameras and photographers, right? That is correct. And how this overwhelmed you? It was overwhelming, yes. Because you didn't want this attention on you? That is correct. If we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 800, which has already been admitted into evidence. This is a photograph of you taken inside the courthouse when you obtained the DVRO, correct? That's correct. And your friend Raquel Pennington took this photograph? Yes, that's correct. Because you needed to document your time at the courthouse getting a DVRO? She just took a picture of me. I, I, I'm assuming it was um, in relation to my divorce, yeah. If we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 801, which has already been admitted into evidence. Ms. Heard, this is another photograph of you taken inside the courthouse, isn't that right? That is correct. Were you having a photo shoot inside the courthouse while you were getting a DVRO? I would not characterize it that way, Ms. Vasquez. You have a mark on your face, right, Ms. Heard? Yes. 
You didn't use your bruise kit this time to cover it up? No, it was the only day I actually walked out of my house without makeup on. I had to be stopped. My best friend saw me in the bathroom starting to put makeup on and told me not to. All right. Can we please pull up exhibit one? Yes, plaintiff's at one. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. No. Apologies. That's fine. It's already been admitted into yes, evidence. You wrote this op-ed, right, Ms. Hurd? With the help of the ACLU, yes. That's what you testified to in this courtroom, right? That is correct. And this was published on December 18th, 2018, correct? That is correct. Aquaman was released on December 21st, 2018, right? That is, uh, yes, that sounds correct. And that was your first big blockbuster, big budget role, right? I, I disagree, but it was the first time I had like a, a leading role in a movie of that size, yes. Well, second time, yes. What was your first time? But the first one was the film I talked about before. I mean, yesterday, um, Justice League, it introduced the character. So, you know, technically it was the second one. But you were the love interest in Aquaman, correct? That is correct. Right. Now, at least parts of this op-ed are about Mr. Depp, isn't that right? It's about what happened to me after. You sat here during opening statements when your attorney argued that the context of your statements in this op-ed matter, correct? That's correct. So let's go through some of that context. He wrote here, quote, friends and advisors told me I would never work again as an actress, that I would be blacklisted. That is You're referring correct. to your accusations of domestic violence against Mr. Depp in the statement, aren't you? Uh, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. You're referring to your accusations of domestic violence against Mr. Depp in the statement, aren't you? Um, uh, in general, I'm referring to being associated with domestic violence. And you're referring to what you claim happened after you got an ex-party domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp in May of 2016, right? Are you asking me if that's what I was writing about? That's what you're referring to, correct? Can you just give me the question again? I'm sorry. You're referring to what you claim happened after you got an ex-party restraining order against Mr. Depp in May of 2016. That's correct. You also wrote, quote, questions arose as to whether I would be able to keep my role of Mira in the films Justice League and Aquaman. This is also referring to your accusations of domestic violence against Mr. Depp, right? This is referring to what happened to me after I got my TRO, my restraining order. Against Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. These questions arose only after you accused Mr. Depp of domestic violence in May of 2016, allegedly, right? Yeah, from the time I got the TRO, being associated with domestic violence, that's what it's a reference to, yes. You also wrote, quote, imagine a powerful man as a ship like the Titanic. That ship is a huge enterprise. When it strikes an iceberg, there are a lot of people on board desperate to patch up holes, not because they believe in or care about the ship, but because their own fates depend on the enterprise. In this op-ed, you're saying Mr. Depp is a ship, right? I'm making an analogy to a powerful man as a ship. The powerful man you're referring to in this analogy is Mr. Depp, right? Uh, I was talking about a bigger issue actually than just Johnny. I was talking about what we as a, um, as a country were talking about at the time of writing this, which is when powerful men in general do something horrible or something they shouldn't, how there is a system in place to protect them, clean up after them, maintain them uh, afloat. You know, this is a reference to not just Johnny, it was about what was happening as a culture when we were addressing a lot of Me Too issues for the first time. The iceberg is you in this analogy, right, Ms. Hurd? Um, I would not say that. I had, that had not, that was not what I intended, no. So this is another reference to your accusations against Mr. Depp. Uh, no, this is about what happened to me once I left uh, that relationship and got a TRO and became associated with domestic violence. But it's your testimony that this op-ed isn't about Mr. Depp, right? 
It's about what happened to me after. That's it's correct. It's about your experience after obtaining a temporary restraining order against Mr. Depp, right? That is correct, among other things. But it's not about Mr. Depp. It is not about him. Mr. Depp is making it about Mr. Depp, right? Ironically. It's kind of like that Carly Simon song, right, Ms. Heard? I don't know what you mean. Let's talk about the defamatory statements in the op-ed that you also claim are not about Mr. Depp. Then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. This is about Mr. Depp, isn't it? No. <laughs> you wrote this in 2018, right? Exactly. And two years prior was 2016, right? That's true. Okay. That's correct. So it's not about Johnny. Two, it's Ms. about Heard, what happened to me Ms. after. Heard, my question was May of 2016 is two years prior to December of 2018. Correct? That's correct. All right. May 2016 is when you publicly accused Mr. Depp of domestic violence, right? I got my restraining order at that time. And you publicly accused Mr. Depp of domestic violence. Yes, that was in, attached to my restraining order. So yes. May of 2016 is when you sought a restraining order against Mr. Depp. That's correct. correct. And, and I had to May, provide testimony for that. Right. And May 2016 is when you walked into court with a mark on your face to obtain that restraining order. Yes or no? That was the day I walked into court with a bruise on my face. Yes. And you were photographed with that mark on your face, weren't you? I walked out to a bunch of photographers, yes. May 2016 is when you told the world that Mr. Depp had physically abused you during your relationship. Isn't that right? Well, that I had to provide testimony as part of my restraining order application, yes. And that's how you became a public figure representing domestic abuse. Right, Ms. Hurd? From that point on, yes. That's when you claimed you faced our culture's wrath, that's right? That's when it started, yes. But it's your testimony under oath that this statement is not about Mr. Depp. It is uh, not. It is about what happened to me afterwards. That's the more interesting, was the more interesting thing for me to write about. The next statement reads, I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. This is also about Mr. Depp, isn't that right? Not just about him, but he is included in that, yes. He's the man you accused of abuse two years prior to this op-ed. Isn't that right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, but I wrote this op-ed in the context of many men at the time that were public figures or in this public eye being accused as well. So it was a reference in general to a larger phenomenon, not just Johnny. Not just Johnny. Not just Johnny. Okay. And then you write, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced her culture's wrath. This one's also about Mr. Depp. I did not write that. Well, you've accused Mr. Depp of sexual violence in this very courtroom, haven't you? Yes, but I, I was intending to keep that private when this was published. I, I, I had not pub publicly ever accused him of that. I'm gonna move to strike everything after the word yes. No, I'll overrule the objection, go ahead. You may not have written this title, but you published it, didn't you? I did not publish a title. I, I retweeted the article that included the title in it because that was the article. Let's pull up, please, Plaintiff's Exhibit 3, which is already in evidence. This is a tweet from your Twitter account on December 19th, 2018, correct? That is correct. Your Honor, I'm... Oh, it's already in evidence? It, it is in evidence. evidence. Yes. Thank you. So on December 19th, 2018, you tweeted, quote, today I published this op-ed in the Washington Post. Did I read that right? That is correct. And the tweet includes a link to the op-ed we were just looking at, correct? That's correct. And you can see that the title of the op-ed in your tweet is, quote, opinion, Amber Heard. I spoke up against sexual violence, right? Yes, you don't get to change the title of an article you're retweeting. And that's the title that you put on your Twitter correct? I did not put it on my Twitter, no. You linked it to your tweet. I, I retweeted the article. But you published it. I retweeted a link to an article that I wrote. And you published it on your Twitter account. All right. I retweeted it. You testified yesterday that you didn't have any control over the title and just now of the op-ed when you retweeted it. Is that correct? That is correct. This wasn't a retweet though, right? Uh, a tweet? Perhaps not retweet? I don't, I'm not quite sure. It was, a, it was tweet. a tweet. Tweet. I misspoke. Excuse me. Tweet. 
not retweet. You included a link to the electronic copy of the op-ed in your tweet, right? That's what I was trying to say earlier, um, and I might have misspoke. It's like I, I'm trying to attach it. Right. So you included a link, right? Yes, to the that's correct. Okay. That's correct. So you must have seen the title of the electronic version of the op-ed before you tweeted it, right? I may have. I just didn't notice it. Not very careful about what you publish, are you, Ms. Hurd? I just didn't notice the title. You didn't need to include the link to the electronic version of the op-ed in your tweet, did you? How else would I have linked it? Well, you didn't need to include the link to tell the world that today you had published this op-ed in the Washington Post about women who are challenging their rage and about violence and equality into political strength despite the price of coming forward, right? I couldn't attach it with a paper clip. No, but you didn't need to attach it at all to tell the world oh, that you had saying. published an op-ed. No, the goal was to, to tweet about it and to provide a link so that people could read it. The op-ed is in your name, right? That's correct. So if you had noticed the title of the electronic version of the op-ed before you included it in your tweet, you could have asked the Washington Post to change it. Isn't that right? Uh, no, that's not. But you didn't do that, right? You never asked the Washington Post to change the title. I didn't notice it, and I didn't ask them, nor do I think I needed to. At the bottom, do you see that there's another tweet from December 19th, 2018? Yes, I do. And in this one, it reads, I am honored to announce my role as an ACLU ambassador on women's rights. Did I read that right? That's correct. So you announced your ACLU ambassadorship the same day you posted the op-ed on your Twitter. Is I think that, right? that was always the plan, is to attach the article with the, uh, the announcement that I was an ambassador. Okay. Your Honor, if, if I may, uh, would this be a good time to stop for lunch? No, it's too no. early. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> we got to keep going at least till 1230. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday about your counterclaim against Mr. Depp in this case. Do you remember that testimony? Uh, yes, I do. Your counterclaim is based on three statements made by Mr. Depp's attorneys, Adam Waldman. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. We looked at those three statements yesterday, right? That's correct. And the first statement was from an April 8th, 2020 article, right? That's correct. And that's Defendant's Exhibit 1245 that's been previously admitted. Please pull that up. Thank you. If we could please publish that. Thank you. We can scroll down to the eighth page. Mr. Depp's, excuse me, Mr. Waldman's statement is buried on the eighth page of a 12 page article. Is that right, Ms. Hurd? I don't know how many pages are here. Well, let's, this is the eighth page. Let's go to the 12th. Let's pull up, please, Defendant's Exhibit 1246, which has already been admitted. And if we could please go to Mr. Waldman's statement on page 10. And go on to page 11 of a That's Mr. Waldman's statement, right? That is correct. Okay. Uh, I think it's um, Mr. Waldman speaking on behalf of Johnny, yes. You don't have any evidence of that, do you, Ms. Hurd? This is Mr. Waldman's statement, right? I think it's included in the article as well. That this is Mr. Waldman's statement, correct? Uh, that a, a representative or an attorney, I don't know which word it says in the article, that it says, it says very clearly that they're speaking on behalf of Johnny or representing Johnny. Um, can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 8818, 8818A, excuse me. If we could please go to page eight of this article.
Sorry, Your Honor. May I just All approach? Right. Yes, ma'am. We'll come back to this. Sorry, Ms. Hurd. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Your Honor. Right. Um, let's go ahead and take this down, please. Thanks. You testified yesterday about how your reputation was before these three statements were made, correct? Uh, yes, I did. You testified that your career was going very well before. I think I said the trajectory was positive, yes. You testified you had a global campaign for L'Oreal, right? That is correct. You testified you were waiting on a schedule for Aquaman 2. That is correct. You testified you were scheduled to do a press tour for the TV show, The Stand. Press obligations, yes. And then you testified that after the articles, you were no longer actively involved in the L'Oreal campaign. Isn't that right? They suspended using my uh, material. And that you were no longer involved in the publicity surrounding The Stand after the articles, right? That's correct. And you didn't hear anything about the schedule for Aquaman 2. Correct. Ms. Hurd, you have no evidence that Mr. Waldman's three statements are the reason you are allegedly no longer active in the L'Oreal campaign, do you? Um, well, I mean, other than my awareness that they can't use me because of all of the online um, attention that generated. And you have no evidence that Mr. Waldman's three statements are the reason that the stand media opportunities allegedly stop, do you? Yeah, I know they couldn't attach my name to their promotional materials because of the online stuff. In fact, there was a lot of reasons why you were no longer active in these endeavors. Isn't that right? Um, I disagree with that. Reasons that had absolutely nothing to do with Mr. Waldman's statements. Isn't that right? Uh, I disagree with that. There was a lot of publicity about your relationship with Mr. Depp around the time Mr. Waldman made the three statements at issue, right? Uh, I do not recall. A lot of really negative publicity for you, Ms. Hurd. Isn't that right? There's been an ongoing smear campaign, yes. An ongoing negative publicity campaign. It's an orchestrated smear campaign. You have no evidence of that, do you, Ms. Hurd? Just look me up, you'll see. Let's take a look at some of that. All right.
Thank you everyone for your patience. So Ms. Hurd, my last question to you was that there was a lot of negative publicity for you around the time that Mr. Waldman made these statements. Isn't that correct? I believe that they were made, uh, I mean, I believe that the statements kind of kept being attached to new defamatory, or, you know, um, articles that were like smear campaign sort of attack articles is what it. Okay, let's go through some of the articles that were out in the press. So plaintiff's exhibit 1267. I could just publish that just for the witness. That would be great, thank you. This is an article published on February 2nd, 2020. And the title is, hashtag justice for Johnny Depp trends after Amber Heard admits to hitting actor in audio clip. Do you see that? I see that. And if we can go to plaintiff's exhibit, 1268. This one was published on February 3rd, 2020. It reads the title, Amber Heard admits to hitting Johnny Depp in recording. Yeah, that's that? when his lawyer leaked an edited tape. <laughs> Ms. Heard, do you see the title? Amber Heard admits to hitting Johnny Depp in recording. Do you see that? I see the title. Okay. We could please go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 1269. This one was published on March 17th, 2020. Amber Heard slammed door into Johnny Depp's head, reveals new audio. Do you see that? Yeah, these are more of the PR plants. Let's go to 1270. This one was published on March 31st, 2020. Amber heard to be sacked from Jason Momoa's Aquaman after Johnny Depp's controversy reports. Do you see that? I do. You can go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 1271. See the title that says, Johnny Depp says ex-wife Amber Heard sliced his finger off and it quote, erupted like the Vesuvius, Vesuvius. I just don't know when that was, um, I've never seen that article. We can go to 1272. This one was published on May 29th, 2020. And it says, when Amber Heard confessed to smashing a door into Johnny Depp's head, clocking him in the jaw. Do you see that? I see that. Going to 1275. This one was published on July 15th, 2020. Amber Heard stole my sexual assault story, ex aide tells libel trial. Do you see that? This was Adam Waldman as well. It doesn't say Mr. Waldman. It actually says Kate James also says she often received abusive text messages from Johnny Depp's ex-wife, doesn't it? I just know because he threw down the article. Miss Heard, isn't that what that Mr. says? Mr. Waldman threw the newspaper Ms. Heard, at me afterwards. Miss Heard, that's not my question. What my was question, your question is, Sorry. the title of the article says, Amber Heard stole my sexual assault story, ex aide tells libel trial. Kate James also says, your Honor, she opened the door by saying it was Adam Waldman. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. Let's go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 1276. Amber Heard admits to hitting fucking baby Johnny Depp in court audio. Do you see that, Ms. Heard? That's correct. Okay. Let's go to 1277. Published July 28th, 2020. Amber Heard's sister thought she was going to kill Johnny Depp, claims witness. Do you see that, Ms. Heard? I see that. In 1278. 
published on July 28, 2020. Johnny Depp was the victim of, a, of abuser Amber Heard, London's High Court told. Do you see that? I do see that. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Go ahead and take our, our lunch recess then. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our hour lunch recess at this point. Do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research. Okay, we'll see you now. Back at one thirty-five. Then is that fine? All right. Thank, thank you. you. All right.